We're working to connect a region of over 600 million bridges between our lands. Hello everyone, I'm Alma Angeles and with me is Mr. Cesar Vallejos and we're, he we're here today with a very, very special guest, our very new ambassador from Israel, Ambassador Harpaz. Welcome to the show, sir. I'm very happy to be here. Welcome to you and to all our, your spectators. C Cesar? Yeah, Ambassador, uh, the uh, President of the Philippines, President Rodrigo Duterte, um, visited Israel and uh, he made a historic visit in Israel. So far, what are the uh, latest updates about the many um, agreements that uh, the Philippines had with uh, the government of Israel? Well, it was a very important uh, visit. I would characterize it as a historic visit that symbolized the historic ties between our two countries that started already before Israel received independence when President Quezon decided to receive the Jews, open the doors of the Philippines to the Jews that were running away in Europe from the uh, mm -hmm. Nazi regime. Mm -hmm. When President Rojas was the only, decided to vote yes when Israel received independence in 1947, the only Asian country to vote yes for Israel. And from our side, our very close cooperation on uh, agriculture, the fact that we were here in big numbers to help you when you had the, the tragedy of Yolanda, uh, and on this, we cemented all the agreements and the cooperation uh, that, uh, that is working within us, and we implemented it uh, during the visit by a series of bilateral agreements. Ambassador, um, you are very... I know that Israel really... They really uh, remember what uh, other people has done for them, like what you've mentioned about President Manuel El Quezon and... Uh, about how we were the first, the Filipinos were the first one who voted for Israel. The only be, one in Asia. The only, the only one, Asian the country only to vote see. yes to Israel. Mm -hmm. We will always remember it. We will never forget it. And that is a characteristic of Israelis that I seem to see from a country like yours and from, your, uh, from Israel. Well, yes, yeah. We have friends and Israel and the Philippines have a very close uh, relationship, mm -hmm. friendship. Mm -hmm. You have tens of thousands of ambassadors in Israel. The, the, the thousands of Filipinos which are working as caregivers in Israel are beloved by us. They are mm -hmm. taking care of our elderly people, mm -hmm. of our people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is an important issue that we reached an agreement during the visit. Mm -hmm. So I think it goes both directions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so going back to Cesar's yeah. question about the oil deal yeah. that you recently uh, signed with uh, that uh, Israel and the Philippines really mm -hmm. recently signed, can you expound more on this okay. on this deal? First, it was one of the major achievements that uh, we reached during the visit. It's the Israeli private company, I would say, Ratio Petroleum, is the one that signed the agreement with your government. I was present at the palace uh, last week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same company that found, uh, discovered uh, approximately uh, 12 years ago the biggest gas uh, oil offshore uh, in the Mediterranean near Israel, the biggest mm -hmm. one in the, in the Mediterranean. And they will start looking here uh, for uh, mm -hmm. minerals from gas and oil at uh, uh, east of Palawan. Uh, and it's something that all of us hope that it will, uh, they will find something at the end and that will help you to be, as your president said, self-efficient when it comes to, uh, uh, to energy. Mm -hmm. As we are now, we'll become uh, soon self-efficient, which, which, which it comes to gas. Mm -hmm. Israel never. I remember as a child, all our neighboring Arab countries had oil, we had zero, we had nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and now our economy is very strong, as you know, and finally, 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 we have found uh, actually several uh, 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 gas fields, and the biggest one, Leviathan, which mm -hmm. means whale in English, will start uh, actually uh, producing uh, gas uh, next year, and Israel will also export gas to neighboring countries like uh, Jordan and Egypt. So it's very important also in the regional perspective, and uh, you know you can never know when it comes to energy, but we hope that, uh, that mm -hmm. the company that, that, that signed the contract with the Philippine government will find mm -hmm. also what you are looking for. 
Yes. There are many sectors, actually, Ambassador, that I think Israel is very interested in. You mentioned, of course, about the uh, energy sector. Uh, what do you think is uh, would be the specific output of this energy exploration, and how do you think will this impact on uh, not only for uh, the Philippine energy sector, but also uh, for Israeli businesses? Yes. I think that Israel generally is lucky that we were not addicted to energy. If we had oil, you might be addicted to energy. We succeeded in developing an economy which, uh, which is diverse, with diverse products, diverse, diverse market. Israel is being seen as the startup nation. We develop new technologies all the time. Mm -hmm. In Israel, you find all the big international companies, Intel, Google, Facebook, mm -hmm. Microsoft, have a research and development centers. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the Philippines, so energy is only one area of cooperation. Mm -hmm. We're speaking about innovation, about cyber, about agriculture, water technologies. Uh, so the, the, op the many options, and some, some very important agreements were signed in, uh, when it comes to this issue. We have no impediments when it comes to development, uh, to deepen and widen our relations in these areas with the Philippines. And this is a, a direct a, a outcome of uh, the historic visit of uh, President Duterte to Israel. And he was welcomed uh, by us, and it was a wonderful visit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How was the visit of President Duterte there? How was he received, and how did the people find him, aside from the Filipinos, of yeah. course, who were excited to see him? Well, first, the Filipinos in Israel, that yeah. was really unique. They welcomed I was at the event. It was <laughs> something to see how they, admire the, how they admire your president and how it generally they they, they feel comfortable in Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, President met Prime Minister Netanyahu for a very friendly and uh, a long meeting of, uh, of all the teams. Uh, mm -hmm. And they met our president. Uh, uh, so it was, it was very fruitful and very, very friendly relationship and uh, visit. You mentioned earlier about uh, Israel's support to innovation. And um, I have been covering Alma and Ambassador, a lot of uh, startups, a lot of innovations mm -hmm. done by accelerators, by um, uh, innovators. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is one of the uh, major areas. And uh, there are our teams in the Philippines. Uh, there are a lot of students and entrepreneurs who build uh, startup companies. And I think it's one of your focus areas as well, Ambassador. Uh, actually, yesterday we had the a competition here in uh, Manila uh, of startups in the Philippines uh, mm -hmm. that uh, young startups and the winner that was actually uh, was chosen is a company to develop uh, technology to search uh, in the sea uh, will go to Haifa in Israel to participate oh. in a seminar mm -hmm. that will, uh, uh, will go actually in a month uh, in seminar international seminar on, on startup We have a mentality of being a startup nation. We always look for the next thing. We have a mentality of being a startup nation. We always look for the next thing. I mm -hmm. always say, you know, our mentality, let's say there is a mountain and you can't pass the mountain. So most people will say, well, sorry, we can't, we can't move, you know, we just go, we sit, go back. We will move the mountain or try <laughs> to move the mountain. So this, this is, we're always looking for, you know, we don't have huge, big, mega companies. We have a lot of mid-sized companies that are looking always to find the next solution for issues. That's why Israel is really is considered, even though we are a very small country, we are considered as a startup nation. Are you providing incentive uh, to the selected yeah. startup? Without government involvement, it wouldn't work in Israel. Out of our GDP, 4.5% of our GDP is research and development. Mm -hmm. Startups, mm -hmm. you know, not, you might try 10 times and succeed only mm -hmm. twice. You need to give incentives to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, when they are maturing. So some of them, I spoke, uh, you know, in a few interviews about uh, Waze. Waze, everybody does are stuck in traffic yes. jam yeah, in the Philippines, in Israel, or in East Asia. They know that if they want to find a way, it's Waze. Waze was starting. Correct. It's a very, like an office like this by uh, very young people and was sold by five billion dollars oh, wow. uh, to international, you know, to, to a, a multinational and the company is staying in Israel, developing it. 
Uh, the same for Mobileye. Mobileye is, is a company in Jerusalem. Two professors from the Hebrew University develop a technology that will save uh, you from car accidents uh, wow. uh, mm -hmm. based on algorithm and mathematics. Mm -hmm. They were bought in 15 billion dollars. 15 billion wow. and staying in Israel. So this is very, very, it, show, it shows you a lot. Of, and this is all private sector. Some of them okay. got help from the, the government at the beginning or mm -hmm. not. But this is our, our I think, mentality. And we, we are more than willing to share our experience with our uh, friends from the Philippines when it comes to innovation and, and, and technology. And actually, Israeli companies are well present here. Uh, mm -hmm. And we want they will come even more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm interested about your water technology. Um, do you have any deals with the Philippines? Have you had any yeah. deal with this technology? Our challenges, the challenges of Israel and the Philippines when it comes to water are totally different. In Israel, we have lack of water. Okay. Yeah. Dramatically, we, from the day we were born, we Israelis are educated how to save water. Yes. Here we have plenty of water. Your mm -hmm. challenge is, is water management, water mm -hmm. security. Okay. And here, uh, major, the, the major Israeli uh, companies which are dealing with uh, water management, water supply, water security are active here for many years. Mm -hmm. In addition to Israeli companies which are dealing with drip irrigation, they're for agriculture, so you have it here. In mm -hmm. Israel, we don't have water, so what we do, we create new sources of water. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Desalination. We take uh, water from the Mediterranean and, uh, and we make them a, a, a drinkable water. Almost all the, ho all, almost 100 percent of the uh, home consumption water in Israel comes from desalination. In addition, we use our sewage water, and they're being recycled and returned for irrigation. Uh, uh, and uh, we are number one in the world. I think uh, almost 80 percent, even more, of our sewage water is being recycled for irrigation. So we try to make the utmost out of this, and we try to implement some of these technologies here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As earlier said by our chairman, water can be used as a foreign policy. And you said this could be used for peaceful yeah. uh, policies between I agree. nations. I yeah? agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, part of the peace arrangement between Israel and Jordan is actually we are transferring a, a 50 million cubes of water to Jordan every year. Wow. Uh, again, the challenge in the Middle East is different. We need to create new sources of water. Mm -hmm. the, this is a challenge which is totally different from here. But mm -hmm. we are very good and we have a lot of experience in the technologies mm -hmm. to make water safer, drinkable, water security is crucial. Adding to this, the issue of cyber terrorism. Today, you know, mm -hmm. you can uh, block a whole electricity of a country on an airport. Mm -hmm. Uh, or even to damage water uh, with uh, a cyber. And also in this, Israel is very, very active, and we have hundreds of Israeli companies which are, uh, have uh, know-how and experience and technology when it comes to cyber technology. Which is exactly my follow-up question, mm -hmm. Ambassador mm -hmm. and Alma, because even here in the Philippines, uh, with the Data Privacy Act and all the uh, hacking in, 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 in banks and in uh, personal uh, information, we also learned that a lot of uh, Israeli companies are really the uh, major and major, major players in the area of cybersecurity. Are there specific projects or activities uh, where you can share your expertise in the cybersecurity yeah. department? First, it's the private sector which is very busy with this. Uh, Israeli companies are only active here. You have to know that all of us are being attacked every day mm -hmm. by cyber. This is the reality. And, uh, and what you have to look for is how you protect what we identify as crit critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yes. airports and ports and electricity and water mm -hmm. and, and all the data that you have, whether today, all of you, you know, you, I look at your cell phone, you know, everything mm -hmm. is, is there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is, it's not the future, it's the present. Mm -hmm. the, the threat and the yes. challenge is already now. And it's changing very fast. It's it's an area which is it's all this. So it's it's another challenge that we should mm -hmm. work together. Very good technologies. Most of it is a private sector. Even though we have also government to government mm -hmm. cooperation and sharing our experience, which we, which we are doing it today, and the world becoming more digitalized, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a challenge that all of us are facing. It's mm -hmm. it's in a global issue. It's not a local yes. issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Correct. Mm -hmm. when, when it comes to business, uh, Ambassador, what policies do you think must be addressed by the government to have a better business climate mm -hmm. for Israeli businessmen? I am not here to give any recommendation for the Filipino oh. mm -hmm. uh, government. I can tell you that uh, we, we signed a, a, an investment agreement during mm -hmm. President's visit to mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. We are going to have our first, as a direct outcome, mm -hmm. first 
mix economic committee at the first quarter of next year mm -hmm. here we signed this energy uh, agreement mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of I see the presence of Israeli companies here mm -hmm. we really hope uh, we also we are pushing very hard to advance direct flights from the Philippines to Israel it's something mm -hmm. that can mm -hmm. enhance tourism I will say a word about tourism the number of Filipino tourists to Israel has tripled itself in the last few years wow. and the number of Israeli tourists has doubled itself mm -hmm. and I think for Filipino in difference for many other countries if I'm not wrong to most of the European countries the United States you need visa mm -hmm. well from Israel uh, yeah. uh, Caesar and Alma <laughs> right after this program you can take the plane and go no need for visa and the same for uh, Israeli tourists that are coming by the thousands now to the Philippines uh, we welcome the Filipinos in Israel. A lot are going by organized group as uh, pilgrims to the Holy Land. And mm -hmm. I just invite you to come uh, to visit our beautiful country. You will be more than welcome. Speaking of tourism, Ambassador, I'm sure with your two months stay here in the Philippines, you've been around. So what is your impression on the uh, tourist spots here? It's an easy question. You fall, you fall <laughs> in love. I just <laughs> spent a beautiful... I was in Visayas traveling uh, for four days. You have, it's almost like heaven. What can I tell you? You go in, uh, in Bohol, in Cebu, and this is just the start. It's so peaceful. It's not exploited, which is also important. People are so friendly, and the food is excellent. What can, and it's also, you know, it's a mixture because it's great for family vacation, but also for couples, mm -hmm. uh, honeymoons. You have, you have everything, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And many Filipinos take that for granted, yeah, because they see it every day <laughs> just in front of them. So but you know, don't. I was born in Jerusalem, a country mm -hmm. that millions all over the world wants a, a city. Mm -hmm. that they, they, their dream is to visit Jerusalem. Now mm -hmm. I was, this is my town. <laughs> and I see, I was growing up there, you know, so it's there for me. Yeah. I understand and I feel like, so I think it goes the same. And I, actually I met a lot of Filipino tourists that are traveling inside the country with their families. Uh, which is great. It's a wonderful country. You, you, you <laughs> ju it's a, and I just start tasting it and I have a, a, I, I'm sure that I will see much more in the coming uh, months and years. What's your favorite um, Filipino food that you've tasted so well, far? I was immediately, I was uh, uh, approached by many Filipinos which I met, you should try. Halo Halo was the first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Binakol soup was the second, <laughs> and the third was uh, a, a adobe chicken. So I had a very good start. I love it all, some of it I, I ate twice, and I'm sure there will be more to come when I travel in the country. <laughs> and I hope you will taste balut as well. Well, uh, I, 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 I'm open to everything, and I'm very Israeli. Okay, I think we have a balut after the show. Oh, <laughs> okay. You bought some? <laughs> you know, speaking of uh, uh, the figure on trade and investments, do you have an idea or figure I, you know, I don't in terms know. of how? I think we are not exploiting the potential, uh, and mm -hmm. the direct flights will help a lot. It will bring investments, it will bring businessmen, mm -hmm. it will bring tourism. So I think that, that this is the our, our role of a government is to create the conditions for the private sector to do its work mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to open the doors for them and they identify opportunities. That's what we're doing. At the end of the day, the private sector is the one that should do. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, have a, we are in a very good starting point. Approximately 30,000 Filipinos are mm -hmm. part of our society. They are integral part. We appreciate them. We love them. They are more than welcome. They are visiting the holy places. I just wanted, Ambassador, to go back to your statement earlier about uh, caregivers. Yeah. Um, this is uh, there is one. Uh, this is one of the historic uh, outputs uh, after uh, with the agreement of the press of President Duterte and the Israeli government. Can you uh, elaborate on how important this agreement is? We love the Filipino caregivers in Israel. They take care of our elderly people, of our people with disabilities. Approximately 30,000 Filipinos are mm -hmm. part of our society. They are integral part. We appreciate them. We love them. They are more than welcome. They are visiting the holy places. They paid all during the years a lot of placement fees. I heard around $10,000 even just to go to Israel. Why they should pay this amount? Many years it was discussed and just this visit 
help us to reach a, a historic bilateral agreement between the two governments, which will regulate it, which means they will pay here around $800, which is, you know, a logical mm -hmm. plus flying ticket. And, uh, and, and I think it's much more fair to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need more caregivers from the Philippines. And in addition, we will start in 10 days discussions on bringing Filipinos to Israel, those that will be interested in work, to work at the hotel industries. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they are wonderful in services. Mm -hmm. they are, uh, hospitality is a brand name for the, for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. They speak very good English. So that was a major, concrete, like, like the energy issue, a concrete achievement of this uh, historic visit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will be delving with the hotel industry as well. So you will be, um, uh, Filipinos will be sent there for work in the hotel industry as well. Yeah, we are interested, we, we are starting discussions about it. We have it, we need to have because qualified uh, hotel uh, people to work at the hotel industries. And uh, uh, one of the option, uh, assuming we will reach an agreement, as I hope, will be to have Filipinos mm -hmm. also working in Israel, as they work as caregivers, work at the hotel industry, which is, by the way, growing a lot because the number of flights to Israel and the number of tourists is, is we are breaking records. More than three million tourists already this year in mm -hmm. Israel, which is, for us, it's a record. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it was recently in the news that the uh, uh, Israel is open to uh, Filipinos already applying for the hotel industry. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. this is what they, I think, yeah, that, that's correct. We are going to pass the threshold, Israel, of nine million citizens next year. So we have mm -hmm. a third of... Three million is one of third of our population. Those mm -hmm. for, is those tourists that are coming. So it's it's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, and, and we need more. We just we have we have more hotels, more resorts, mm -hmm. yeah. and we need the qualified uh, uh, people to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have immersed with our communities, with the Filipino communities. What do you think, Ambassador, are the traits uh, that uh, you find uh, Filipinos that you think are uh, very Israel-like? <laughs> First and foremost is the family, the importance of the family. This is so similar to us. Uh, uh, the, uh, the family support, the importance of the mm -hmm. role of the family, of getting together. Mm -hmm. It's one by one, uh, like Israel. And the f people are friendly. You meet someone, and in five minutes, you know his family history and where is that, mm -hmm. and what's the issue. That's exactly like like us. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we are, we are open, we are friendly, we are warm, and uh, and the same it comes to you. Mm -hmm. So I feel already uh, like at home. When you say dahan dahan, I know this is uh, slowly slowly. <laughs> when you say sege, I know I need to do. You know, I learned it very very fast. It reminds me a lot of Israel. I think the, we have uh, exactly uh, so so much, and that's why we feel so comfortable. Me and my wife, uh, uh, for, it was easy to fall in love with the Philippines. Very mm -hmm. easy. One of the questions that uh, maybe some Filipinos who want to go there or maybe work there is the factor of safety. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it safe? Is it uh, because of, you know, the news, some of the news are negative, mm -hmm. but it's really not like that when you go to the proper mm -hmm. city, right? So I, can you tell us more about that? It's all over mm -hmm. the world you have these challenges. Mm -hmm. have how many terror attacks were in Europe in the last few years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Terror attacks were elsewhere in the world, you know. The, you are suffering in the south, so what? So if people won't come to the Philippines, mm -hmm. they would come. Yeah. We, have, mm -hmm. we have challenges. We are not heading away. But everyday life is your present experience. Are very strong despite uh, all those years we had our challenges. All of us have to. We are not shying away that there are challenges. Mm -hmm. But the, the best answer is to go on strong with your, your life and uh, to come and visit our country. I think you are blessed. And the, the tens of thousands of Filipinos that are living yeah. in Israel and visiting mm -hmm. every can yeah. tell you the story again. You know, there's no 100% in life, but, but I think, I think we, uh, the, the numbers are telling, I think that that's mm -hmm. the best answer. The symptoms that comes here, you know, mm -hmm. you read the media from time to time, in the South, they were probably, so what? If they come out the thousand, they will come more, you know. That they, mm -hmm. Like every, every country, you have to know where it's recommended to go, where it's not recommended, but, but I think today it's a global issue. Mm -hmm. It's way beyond the Philippines or Israel or even Europe, it's all over the world. You have just mm -hmm. to be but, vigilant. Yeah, but speaking of uh, security ambassador, uh, is there also projects or cooperation in the areas of uh, military and defense between the two countries? Well, I would just say that we have very good cooperation in all areas, including uh, fighting terrorism and security issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about education? Uh, well, this is a very important issue. We have, uh, every year we have 600 uh, Filipinos going, that are studying in universities here, specializing in agriculture, that are mm -hmm. traveling to Israel mm -hmm. for almost a year. 
Okay. Working in agriculture and being and study in a, in an academic institutions, mm -hmm. we have signed also a, a scientific, a, a technological scientific cooperation during president visit. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is another element of a, a growing cooperation that we have between uh, between our two countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I uh, watched your YouTube uh, video, Ambassador, um, informing about uh, Filipinos of. Uh, the importance of agriculture and uh, bringing in um, Filipino students to learn uh, in the agriculture sector. Uh, in terms of our agricultural output, uh, are you looking at uh, technologies, or specific commodities or agribusiness that you want both countries to uh, maximize and I focus on? I think uh, what we are looking at is mainly technologies that will improve the quality of your uh, and products will make mm -hmm. the life shelf mm -hmm. longer, mm -hmm. uh -huh. post-harvest, mm -hmm. and issues like that you can save water by drip irrigation. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. this is the technologies that uh, we are trying to introduce here, again, for the private sector. Is there anything that you want to let us know about uh, Israel? Just is I invite anything? all of you to come to visit <laughs> my hometown of Jerusalem, the great city of Tel Aviv, 24-7, never stops to visit the northern towns, Tiberias, Nazareth, and to go to see the south of Israel. In such a small country, you have everything. Mm -hmm. We are only 400 kilometers, but you have there a desert and mountains in the north, and even snow and ski in the north in the winter. And you have the beautiful Jerusalem and the vibrant Tel Aviv. We have everything there. When does it Just snow? It, 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 in, in the in winter, Israel. at the January, uh, February, you can have a ski up north in the Hermon Mountain. Oh. In Jerusalem, once every few years. In Jerusalem, yeah. once every few weeks. Yeah. A few years, few years, few years, few years. Few years. Few years. Ah, but in the north, okay. you can do up north. You have up mm -hmm. north. You have. Snow. But recently, you, you earlier you said something about it snowed for the first time. One, it was a, the, the biggest snow we had. <laughs> there was five snow snow day in Jerusalem. It's exception. When I was young, we knew. You can smell when it's going to small, snow, oh. and we knew there, there won't be school. So we, the kids, were waiting for the snow uh -huh. because we knew there won't be school because you know to have all this machinery just for one day every few years. We had five days. It was really an exception, really an exception. We never had such a thing. Usually, it snows once every second or third year. In the north, in the far north, it snows more. Five Mas days yeah. straight? Yeah, maybe? we had five straight when with trucks, so, and then all Jerusalem was white. When was this? 20th, uh, winter of 20, uh, 20, it was 2012, 2013 winter. Wow. Google it, you're fine. You said, ambas Ambassador, that you were born in Jerusalem. Yeah. So how do you describe Jerusalem to Filipinos who long for going to Jerusalem? First, go to Jerusalem. It's the city which is sacred to all three uh, religions. Uh, there is a freedom of uh, worship there. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. It has all the historic elements. And there's also the new Jerusalem with nightlife and museums and fun. So it's a great mixture of vacation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's also a great starting point to go to visit the Dead Sea, Masada. Mm. So you have everything there, and uh, you just take the flight and go. For two months, you've been very, very active, uh, Ambassador. What are the other plans and activities of the embassy as you move on with the rest of your diplomatic mission? As a big basketball fan, and, and I even was playing when I was young, I, I'm eager when I have time to go to see a basketball game. Well, you have the gamer. height, sir. This is something I, I get there. We plan a lot of uh, we a cultural activity, and uh, we are doing a very strong development assistance program in the Philippines, mm -hmm. bringing Israeli experts in areas of uh, debut from of mm -hmm. uh, uh, gender issues and others, so we're going to do all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, we bring a business delegations, and uh, the, the everyday work will continue in order to de deepen and widen those very good relations between mm -hmm. our two people and two countries. The yeah. Philippines is a basketball country, so have you I'm played sure you basketball in the Philippines <laughs> well, already? Not in the Philippines, but I played with Filipinos when I was in Israel. Wow. And now when I have time, if uh, I won't give all the time interviews to the media, I have more time <laughs> to play. I, will, I hope that I can, uh, I can uh, find out at least to watch some basketball. I'm a big, I'm a big sports fan, and, especially, and I know basketball is very big here. Sir, you've been to the uh, Iglesia de Cristo when you uh, made a courtesy call to the executive yeah. minister. What do you think of the, uh, uh, the executive minister, the church, and its activities? Well, it was a very inspiring visit, uh, meeting uh, Brother Manalo. I, I thanked him for their ongoing support to Israel. Uh, and I was humbled by the hundreds of people waiting for me outside, waving the Israeli flags. 
and I just, uh, as I told Brother Manalo, that uh, make sure that uh, you will send as many as, uh, as your people, your members of your church to, uh, to visit Israel, the Holy Land. He has been there already twice, by the way. I mm -hmm. was impressed. I took a tour of the uh, museum uh, and the temple. Uh, I was really, really impressed what we are doing. And everywhere I go in the Philippines, I see the churches uh, all over. <laughs> uh, so it was very, very, very important visit. And uh, I really appreciate the, the exchanges that uh, I had with him and the warm welcome that I had, like all my predecessors. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. It's such an honor to have you on the show. Thank you so much, and we hope you come back again. Thank you. Thank you, both of them. It was a great pleasure for me. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Ambassador. Thank you, Alma. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.